Hi, this is Harold in China. I do want to talk about a thing that's exploding on Western Twitter about China, which is a small protest that happened a few days back in Beijing. And um, it was someone putting up a poster which said, down with Xi Jinping, we don't want uh, we don't want dictatorship, we want votes, we want food, we don't want COVID tests. And um, of course that was picked up massively by Western media and by the anti-China league that's very active on Twitter, uh, claiming that this was an outpour of public anger and whatnot. And of course I would like to uh, present a different opinion, <laughs> very simply. Um, from what I see, what I feel every day in China, um, there are several things to say about this. So, first of all, the obvious criticism that I saw a lot also on Twitter is that there was a spelling mistake in that poster, which is so embarrassing that it's unlikely that any like native-born Chinese with a good education, especially with a university education, would make that spelling mistake. And it was misspelled twice, the same character, so uh, it's pronounced Gu uh, in the word Wen Gu, cultural revolution, and uh, Gai Gu, uh, reform. So that character Gu was misspelled twice. So some people are saying, well, obviously this was written by a non-Chinese or somebody who, a Chinese who wasn't born and raised inside of China implicating obviously that this is backed by the US Embassy, which I have no proof of either way. Like it could be just somebody with uh, an average not so good education who was just not taking care when writing. Although it is weird because it's a simple character. It's not some really confusing weird one with a hundred strokes that Chinese would normally make mistakes if they always write by cell phone and rarely write by hand. So it is weird that it's misspelled, but I would not take that as a proof that it wasn't written by a Chinese, because obviously those who completely don't know China, don't know Chinese, they will not misspell it. They simply don't know how to spell it. So, so yeah, that was the first thing that a lot of people in China found very weird. But I think more relevant are other aspects. Um, the one we want, the one line that says, we want food, we don't want PCR tests. Which, I mean, I can see two interpretations. One is the literal one, the kind of going back to the Shanghai lockdown where some people said we don't have food. But to be honest, like all organic protests in China, when like really Chinese themselves stand up and protest because they suffer from a situation they cannot accept, all those protests are very, very local. It's very unlikely that Beijing students will go on a protest because of something happening in Shanghai. Like if Shanghainese went on protest in large numbers, then Beijingers could join in in solidarity with the Shanghainese. But that somebody in Beijing feels like, oh, those poor people in Shanghai, um, we should protest against our government because of, of that in Beijing. That's very odd. That's not something that organically would happen in China. So again, this points at somebody trying to use a situation, stoke the flames in a situation which they perceive as very tense and, you know, a society that's short before uh, exploding. We just have to light the fuse, which is not what I feel like when I talk to taxi drivers, when I talk to everyday people, when I talk to highly educated, very intelligent and internationally well-versed Chinese as well at my office, you know, there's a very strong difference between being unsatisfied about the, the COVID lockdowns or unsatisfied about not being able to travel internationally versus not supporting the political system anymore. And you can interpret that a bit like in, in the West, a lot of people have always been very dissatisfied with their current government, but it doesn't mean they want to change the system and abolish the form of democracy they have. 
And in, in China, I wouldn't even say a lot of people are dissatisfied with the government. They're dissatisfied with very specific issues that happen locally, like the way the lockdown happened in Shanghai. That got a lot of Shanghainese very angry and they felt like, how is that possible? They tell us three day lockdown and in the end it's three months and the, the, the supplies of food, of water wasn't done well in the beginning. These kind of things, they make people very angry, but that's anger directed at local officials who fail to deliver the tasks that they're uh, supposed to deliver. That's not a questioning of the political system, which Chinese are very well aware if the Chinese system would break down, it would be a collapse of Chinese society, leading to a collapse of production of food supply and, you know, millions of people would die, simply said. And I think Chinese are very well aware of that, that their best chance to have higher prosperity is by improving the current system and not by, by changing the system. So calls for change in the sense of we should go this direction, that direction. Yes, there's a lot. And um, some of that may even be, you know, challenging the status quo. But if you ask about Xi Jinping, I don't see widespread dissatisfaction with his leadership. I see very sophisticated dissatisfaction. For example, like international affairs um, experts and, and people who are interested in international affairs, they may criticize the style Xi Jinping engages with the international community, but in, in very detailed ways, you know, like um, by, by making US investors angry, he, he weakened the hold he had over parts of the American society who were previously very much pushing the US government to keep good relations with China, like things like that. But that's definitely not like the thing that you write on a big poster and put on a bridge in Beijing and then light a fire in order to make sure that you're illegal and that you're seen and that um, the firefighters have to intervene, right? So, so, so this doesn't match at all. So, so yeah, that was one thing that I thought was very important to notice that if it's real organic protest, meaning protest that comes from the people, then it would be about a local issue that the people there really care about. Now the location in Beijing, what location was it? It's um, Sitong Tiao is near the university area. There's a dozen or so universities in that area and they have thousands to ten thousands of students. So in total, in the whole area, I'd assume there's more than 100,000 students. And um, students, as you can imagine, are very well connected. They have relatively a lot of free time. They don't have family. They, they stay in, in the university and in the dorms. So they have offline contacts. So the censorship wouldn't work against them. They know each other through all kinds of associations. Also between universities, there's a lot of exchange. I did one semester at the Tsinghua University in that region, which is one of the famous, very big ones. And we had frequent contact with people from Beida, the Beijing University, Peking University in English it's called, or f with, with the language university nearby or the Renmin University. So like these students all know each other. And if they really had a widespread dissatisfaction that some students would want to make a move on, I'd expect that they would come out in the tens of thousands, not in this lone wolf action. Like a lone wolf action in China is a sign of absolute desperation rather than a sign of like we're sparking a flame and, and we expect things to happen because things don't just happen in China. Things happen when they're well organized. And clearly this protest wasn't because, yeah, it was a one day, one off event. It uh, worked for Western media and um, I, I feel it's, it's, it's completely over. So why do I talk about it at all? I think it is relevant for two reasons. One is the timing. So it was just before the 20th uh, CPC Congress. So the the Er Shaddai in Chinese, it's a, it's a, it's a very big Congress where the uh, next five years leadership of the Communist Party is decided. So that is indeed the moment when within the Communist Party, there's a lot of infighting because people get promoted, people get into retirement, new positions open up, 
this is a phase where one can make or break their careers and even Xi Jinping obviously still has opposition within the Communist Party. There are some people who if they want to get rid of him and replace him by somebody else as a CPC leader now it is the time that they make their moves and I'm sure behind the scenes there are a lot of things happening. So at the first glance I was like well might this be backed by somebody inside high leadership of CPC trying to create an incident that leads to an embarrassment that leads to the possibility to create change. But then when I saw this misspelling, when I saw like how amateurish it was organized and no follow-up coming afterwards, I feel like now this is not done by anyone that has influence and the ability to organize Chinese society. So it might be just some random person trying to gain attention. It might be a Falun Gong, you know, victim who thinks this is like a mission from God or whatever to overthrow the government. Or it might be foreign influence. And I'm not going to speculate which of it it is um, because I really don't have any clear indication. What I just wanted to, uh, to make clear is that I don't think it represents any popular sentiment. Even like this wording, we want to we wanna vote. It's not a complaint that I hear at all in China. I like if you talk to Chinese people, even even people who are very dissatisfied with with the current situation. I had a taxi driver recently who told me, "Never let China become number one in the world because the Chinese people, when they're in power, they're evil." And like he was really anti-Chinese. It was weird, a Chinese person, but almost in a racist way, being like, "Don't let the Chinese become strong." And I was like, "What are you talking about?" But even that person, he would never say, like, we need democracy in China. He would say, like, um, I, I want to get out. He was a person who lost his business uh, due to the uh, COVID situation and who still has a massive wealth in real estate, just, you know, buying apartments in Shanghai, which are now really expensive. And he, he kind of indicated he wants to take that money and take it out of China and live his uh, private happy life with all the money that he took. Oh, uh, and he said now China is, is horrible because um, the salaries are too high. So the workers get so much money so it's impossible to earn a lot by doing textile manufacturing. So in other words, he got rich by exploiting cheap labor and now he wants to take all the money he made out of China instead of investing it to develop this country. So obviously he's very much opposed to the Communist Party strategies which say you were allowed to get rich first but now you have to deliver for the country. You have to also help us make everybody else rich. And uh, that guy didn't want that. So, But even that guy, like he was just very selfish. He wasn't like a political activists thinking that the Western system was anywhere superior. In fact, the popular sentiment about the Western system of democracy is very, very negative. So even people who may feel the current system, the current government isn't good, they're not looking to the US or to Europe for a better alternative. They just think like w what they see from the West is, is horrible chaos. Uh, it's poverty even in very wealthy countries, it's inequality, it's, uh, it's just not organized and it's war. It's always war with the US and Chinese see that and they don't want that. So th that we want voting instead of, uh, you know, instead of PCR tests or whatever. It doesn't feel like what I see as a popular sentiment even among Chinese who are dissatisfied with with what's happening in China these days. So I don't think this was a, a protest that's worth taking serious. I don't think it represents much. Represents a tiny minority maybe, yeah. So that's what I've wanted to share. I hope this video is useful. Please share, like, and let me know in the comments if you have questions, comments, other ideas, and We'll see how it goes on uh, next week, the 20th CPC Party Congress, very important meeting. I expect um, declarations towards more 
um, classic socialist economic uh, models, more state ownership of the, the production resources. Um, because, yeah, China is entering a new phase of socialism and having developed the economy to the stage where it is now, the focus more and more will be about equality and less about just growth. So that's my prediction for next week. We'll see what happens. It's definitely very interesting time for all serious China watchers. Thanks. Bye-bye.